What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have something cool here to show you because I have been building FPV race wings and long range wings, small, large ones, 60 inch versions. I've also been building and putting together iNav with airplanes, uh, fixed wing and um, man, all kinds of planes here on the channel in the past two, three years. Um, but I've, I've been doing planes my, my, my whole life. so. I'm excited today because we have something here that is in the 20 by 20 format for wings specifically or fixed aircraft and it's from HGLRC which also makes me super happy that they're getting into the game as well to make a wing version of a F4 flight controller but a 20 by 20 version which is great. It's a little smaller than what I'm used to. The Matek STD is what I usually use, the F4 STD with barometer. It accepts GPS but this one also has barometer on board and this little guy will support up to an 8S battery. So yeah, small size and it supports a ton of power. The built-in PDB also accepts up to 100 amp for the maximum power input. If you do go over 6S, they tell you to use a capacitor on the, the board input uh, before you fire it up because you could fry this board without the capacitor. But right now, um, I am posting this video on Tuesday, and I, I'm on their website right now. It is actually Monday right now, um, so I made this a day before the video posted. But right now, it's there's a sale on this, um, and it's about, yeah, you're going to save about $4, I believe. off The, the normal price is $45.99, and the sale price is $42.99 for it right now. But um, you can also get a GPS on their website as well that will solder right up to this and I'm going to show you that if you've never done this before this is probably the easiest way to get into it um, mainly because this is a really nice setup and I'm going to show you that it's not super hard to solder up if you've ever soldered up a 5 inch race quad before or even a 20 by 20 micro stack like this you can handle putting GPS on a wing um, I think also the cool thing about this particular controller is that it also supports dual motors. So those of us who want to do twin setups, twin brushless motors on more of like a fixed wing um, airplane style fuselage, uh, a lot of times the motors are out on the wings. And sometimes I've even seen dual motor pusher delta style wings like FPV gigantic wings. Um, but this isn't really the type of board that's going to run the super big servo. So if you had a gigantic wing, this really wouldn't be the board for that. You'd want to go with something that could handle uh, better servo power because this board, it's meant to handle the smaller servos. Um, so that's one thing that they did state that it does handle the smaller servos. And any type of standard airplane with nine gram servos, it could definitely hold that. Um, that'd be no problem. And they did leave us a little bit of extra room to add a bunch of different types of additives on there. If you'd like to add smart audio, you can do that. You can get your GPS going. Um, it's nice because it does have the built-in compass as well with the GPS. And um, some of the other ones that I had out there did not have the compass. And this guy also has five UART serial ports on here as well. So um, yeah, you can go crazy by adding more functionality to it. Um, you could add a pitot tube on there and that's going to give you your airspeed. That's pretty cool. You could do that on one of those UARTs um, available. So in a nutshell, it basically has a lot of options. So let me go ahead and open up the box for you and I'll show you what comes in this box. And after that, we'll take a really close look with my 4K camera at this board layout and how things solder up. So this is everything in the box and this is great. Um, I, I can walk you guys through this type of build a little bit later and, and this video is mostly an introduction to just give you a closer look at what these wing flight controllers are all about. I've been building them for a very long time and usually I use the Matek STD F4. Uh, it has a, a built-in barometer on it and a, a lot of guys try to build these up without the barometer. You need the barometer on there um, to make this work. Um, it also has to support GPS, obviously, because to fly long range or fixed wing um, without GPS on there is just nuts. Um, you fail safe and you're going to drop in the middle of the mountain somewhere 
and you have, have no idea where it is. And the other fail safe that we use with this type of setup is using the full blown crossfire because that also gives us GPS telemetry, uh, latitude and longitude numbers. So even if the battery disconnects on the aircraft, crossfire is going to tell you on the back of your transmitter on that little digital display. That's why it's so popular around the world because you can just load that into your phone and walk right up to your aircraft at the last known coordinates where you crashed if you do crash. Um, so that's a really great thing. It's, it's like a, you know, you could fly 10 miles away and if you had a, fa a fail safe, then you would, you would know exactly where it was latitude and longitude. Um, it doesn't have a particular range on it, like some of the other GPS trackers, uh, or it's not relying on something like 4g or a cell phone, um, connection to work or Bluetooth or something silly like that. So, um, Crossfire is for the more serious long range guys. Now, if you want to do proximity with this, I say proximity, you know, within a mile and you wanted to put GPS on there, this would be extremely easy for you to do that. HGLRC also makes this GPS right here is uBlocks GPS. And uh, we'll take a little closer look at this in a minute. But the nice thing about this is you can snip these two off right here. And you can solder these along this GPS rail on the left hand side of the flight controller. And what made me really happy about this particular kit when it came in and I opened up the box because it looked like this at first. It was kind of like Christmas morning. I, I didn't know what was under those uh, sticker sheet right there. And I opened up the box and I like the way this looks. It's super small. It is that 20 by 20 setup and everything looks fairly plug and play here for the exception of the camera and the receiver and the VTX. But what I got really happy was uh, about was this is a servo harness that's already been set up for me. And a lot of times I spend a lot of time making these myself. And this is so cool that they've already soldered these up for you, made this extension here. And this just plugs into the side of the flight controller there. And you have four extra setups here for your servo. So you can have up to four servos on this particular flight controller. This is really neat. So it'll accommodate an FPV race wing. You know, it'll also accommodate the elevator, rudder, and your ailerons here. So if you're flying a, a, a typical airplane with GPS on it, you could set this up on any type of airplane you really want. Um, pretty cool, even a V-tail. We could do a V-tail setup as well. You also get a base and this mounts to here. And that way you can put some VHB on the bottom of this and really secure it down to your aircraft. And that's really nice that they do that. You get plenty of standoffs for this type of setup and you also get a top plate. And the top plate is for basically putting over top here. It will protect it just a little bit, but most importantly, it gives you kind of a, a quick guide and layout once you have everything all wired up and soldered up. When you go back to looking at this later, if you had to unplug something down here on this bottom rail, there's a ton of stuff right here. And why I say unplug stuff is because they give you pins. You can snip these off and they are ground, your power strip there, and your signal would be blue. So a lot of times it's nice on wings to be able to unplug and plug things back in. Say your VTX went out, all you'd have to do is, you know, pull the plug out and plug a new one in. Same thing with your camera. You can do that with a camera using a servo lead. So if you have another servo lead, the opposite of this one, it's going to be the female version. This is the male version with the post inside. You can just plug those in right along this rail right here. And there's plenty of clearance right there with this top plate, which is really cool. So they thought this out a lot, which I really, really like, because uh, I like the small format that they have going here. I think that's nice then, uh, nicer, a little bit nicer on some of the smaller wings that we have than the larger 30 by 30. It's really a hard, a uh, difficult build to be able to cram a 30 by 30 uh, flight controller, PDB and everything. And this is cool because this is all in one here. It's PDB and flight controller in one. And also in the box, you get this harness right here. This is your GPS harness that will plug into the other side. So if you didn't want to direct solder to this rail, you could do it this way. You could plug this in just below that rail. And then you could snip these off of the GPS here and solder these up according to what this says right here. And it says the same thing on the flight controller, SDA ground, 
TX, RX, 5 volt, and SCL. And one of the most important things about soldering up your GPS on a fixed wing is you're going to reverse TX and RX on the board. So uh, TX goes to RX and RX goes to TX. Otherwise, your GPS is not going to work. And I can show you that here on the board. We can just go ahead and slide all of this out of the way. And we can go ahead and take a little closer look at this board. And I'm just going to zoom all the way into that GPS rail first. Give you a nice close look at that. Really get in there. And so this is interesting because they do have uh, RX3 out here on this side rail. And sorry, my fingernails are dirty because I was doing some uh, uh, oil change on my van. But uh, RX3, we have TX3 ground. We have 5 volt and the SEI and SCA right there. And so, or that's SCL, sorry, um, the prints. But we have the same thing here as well. SDA ground, TX, RX, 5 volt, SCL. So very simple. It's not hard. Once you've done this once, you can do it again and again. That's the great thing about this, is you're learning something here. So up on the top rail is where we have the power to the board. On the top left, we have where the battery and the capacitor goes. This is this very first two right here. You're going to bring your ground and positive there. And that's where also your capacitor could come into play. If you're doing over 6S, that's what you have to do. Uh, and the next two over, this would be like motor one and motor two, okay? and this is where your ESC wires are going to come to um, for your motors. You're going to obviously solder up your motor wires to your, the other side of your ESC, and then your ESC wires will go to these two tabs. So if you only, you're only using one of these, you can, I believe you can start with this outside one and work your way in. It might not matter, um, but you should get power once you solder that up. And that's not hard at all. So I'll zoom in just a little bit closer here and I'll show you that the signal one goes right here. So obviously this one would be motor one, okay? So just like, you know, the S1, S2, S3, and S4. And then we have S2 on this side. So your motor number two would be here, your ESC number two, one and two. And then we also have spots for an extra five volt ground, two grounds there to five, volt, five volts and we have uh, options for LEDs. If you want to add LEDs, looks like we have room for two sets of LEDs on there. So you could go uh, on both sides of your wing, which would be nice. And let's just spin it around here and let's take a look at this bottom rail. There is our arrow for direction. So these pins are going to face the front of your wing and we have RC at the very far side over here. And that is for receiver. So that is going to be where your S bus plugs into. Uh, so if you're looking for that, if you're gonna do an S bus type receiver, that's where that, this, this will also support crossfire. Um, so your signal wire will go in there as well and then you just switch it to crossfire inside of iNav. The next one down on the very bottom, we have ground here. We have SV2 there. We have TX1, RX1. Looks like S6, S543, and we have BB negative and ground there where you can add your buzzer. You have 5 volt, another port for LEDs, and check this out VTX right there and below that camera. So your signal wire for your VTX goes here, your hot wire, which will be your, your 5 volt or above, ground, camera signal wire, 5 volt, ground. And you also have an option over here. It also says cam, but notice it says cam-c right there. Uh, the cam-c is actually your camera control option. So it's kind of nice that they add camera control on here. So you don't have to go plug that uh, little dongle into the back of your little joystick into the back of your run cam or your CADX camera. And mostly the cameras that support camera control are gonna be Fox Ear cameras. So uh, if you're looking for a camera that has camera control, look for the Fox Ear cameras. You also have a lot of ground across the bottom here. Um, and it looks like we have some six volt options across the middle, which is really, really cool. 
and we even have as large as a 33 volt option right here next to TX, I believe it looks like TX5. And then we have RSSI plug right there. So there's plenty of features along the front end of this board. And like I said, depending on what you're adding to this, you've got up to five UARTs, so you can go kind of crazy if you want to. This is the port for your iNav, obviously, and this is also the um, boot button or the DFU button right there. You want to update it to the latest and greatest iNav. But a pretty clean looking board here. It says F4 wing on the bottom right here. Really nice and clean. It looks like it does have some type of coating over top of it. So it should be slightly waterproof, which is cool. Don't submerse it obviously, but it can handle a little bit of moisture because if you're flying way up high, there is a chance for moisture. It's nice that a lot of that stuff is covered up. So I'm pretty excited that HGLRC has come out with the F4 wing flight controller, uh, mainly supporting iNav. And that's great because iNav is way more functional than Betaflight for this type of flying. If you're going to be flying fixed wing with GPS, um, you absolutely want to use iNav and one of these types of boards with compass and, and a barometer involved. I'm just going to make things so much better for you. Um, you have a ton of UARTs on this one. I like that. I like that it's conformal coded. I like also that they incorporated two motor support on here for twin type setups. Uh, really, really nice that they did that. And I think that if they can keep the quality control up on this board, since it is smaller than some of the 30 by 30 stacks, um, I know we've had some issues with 16 by 16 boards recently frying on a lot of people because um, honestly, the companies will tell you that it's really hard to keep a good QC on the smaller 16 by 16 flight controllers. Um, so getting down past this 20 by 20 setup is really challenging for the manufacturers and they have to have a really high grade of uh, attention to detail when they're laying these boards out and soldering up and laying out stuff on the PDB in the factory. So I think it's really cool that they came out with this and uh, I love the size and format of it. And I think it's gonna be pretty easy to solder up so it's not intimidating by any means but if you're looking to get into it um, please do join up with our patreon and uh, a lot of us guys are starting to solder these up and help each other back and forth in discord because the discord and the patreon is um, definitely worth the, the dollar of support per month to uh, get yourself up in the air and even if you had a general question, they can just bounce right back at you in Discord, which is super cool. We have moderators and stuff in there. And we're giving away this Emacs Buzz that's sitting over here to the side. One lucky Patreon is going to get this guy right here coming up at the first week of June. So I'm excited about giving away the Buzz to you guys. And I'm also excited about this. And uh, we'll do some more work with this coming up. And when I get this on an aircraft, I will fly it for you guys. And I'll let you know how this uh, QC holds up in the future. All summer long, I'm going to be flying these. So uh, I have two of these sitting here on the bench, and I'm really excited to get these going. But thanks again for watching my videos, guys. Hopefully you learned something today. I'm Justin Davis, and this has been the F4 Wing Flight Controller from HGLRC. You can check it out in the link below, and you can also get, um, get it on sale right now as well. It's on sale. I think it's like 4 or $5 off. So uh, pick one up and learn how to do fixed wing with GPS. I'm Justin Davis, guys. I'll see you on the next one.